Good evening church family and welcome to our Sunday night reflection. And I hope that these few minutes as we reflect upon Easter, that these few minutes will inspire you, build you up in your faith, that you will have a new understanding of our Lord Jesus and that you would be open to allow the Holy Spirit to touch your heart. Well, today is Easter Sunday. It's the day in our church year when we mark the resurrection of Jesus. He was dead, but he is now alive. And I trust that you have had an opportunity to somehow celebrate that Jesus is alive. Maybe you've marked it with hot cross buns, or maybe you've marked it with Easter eggs, or maybe you've marked it with having a beautiful meal, or maybe you've marked it by just sitting silently and just giving your thanks to God. However way that you've been able to mark this day, it's a day that we celebrate. And so we're going to read about the resurrection of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew, in Matthew chapter 28. And if you've got your Bible there, you might like to open it up to Matthew chapter 28. And I trust that as we read God's Word, that God's Word is alive and active. You as a follower of Jesus have the Holy Spirit within you. The role of the Spirit is to impress upon you God's Word. And so I trust that as we read Matthew 28, the resurrection of Jesus, that he was dead but now alive, that the Holy Spirit will touch your heart. So you might like, if you've got your Bible there or you've got the words of Matthew 28 there, you might like to read it aloud with me that we make this declaration together. Matthew 28, 1 to 10. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone and sat on it. His face shone like lightning and his clothes was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a deep faint. Then the angel spoke to the women. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you're looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He isn't here. He's risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come, see where his body was lying. And now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I've told you? The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they ran to him, grasped his feet and worshipped him. And Jesus said, don't be afraid. Well, I wonder what was the Holy Spirit impressing upon you from this account of the resurrection of Jesus in Matthew 28? What did you sense the Spirit say to you as we took God's word that's alive and active? And you might like to message me or email me or ring me and let me know what is it that the Spirit is pointing you towards. Now, apparently there was a great loss in the entertainment world with the death of Larry LaPrize. Larry LaPrize was the man who wrote the song, The Hokey Pokey. Put your right arm in, put your right arm out, shake it all about. Uh, Larry LaPrize died at the age of 83. And apparently he died quite peacefully. But still it was a difficult time for the family. And it was especially difficult for them to get Larry into the casket. They put his left leg in and, well, that's when all the trouble started. (laughs) And now it's just been over 2,000 years since they had similar trouble in Jerusalem. You see, tombs and caskets are for people who have died. And many cultures have devised means of entombing the remains of those who have died. 
Some of the tombs have now become major tourist attractions throughout the world because of the importance of the person buried there or because of the majestic pieces of architecture. And we see this with the pyramids of Egypt, the Taj Mahal of India. And these tombs, as well as the graves of our own loved ones, are sacred. And they're sacred because of who or what they contain. And yet the most sacred, the most important tomb, and the one that has had the greatest impact upon our world was a simple, unmarked cave somewhere on the outskirts of Jerusalem. And why is this tomb so great? Why is this tomb so important? It's not because of the remains of the person who was buried there. It's not because it's an important piece of, of architecture. The tomb is important because it's empty. There's nobody there. The person who occupied it, Jesus, is no longer there. He is alive. In fact, he only took out a very short lease on the place. Jesus was executed for making extravagant claims. He claimed to be the Son of God. And he revealed that he was the Son of God through some stunning miracles that he did. Jesus was able to open the eyes of a man born blind. And the people of that time knew that the Messiah would come. And one of the things that the Messiah would do would be that he would open the eyes of the blind. And by opening the eyes of the blind, Jesus showed that he was the Son of God, that he was God the Son. And yet he was killed for that. For many people on that first Easter morning, the world was no different than it had always been. Except there was just a handful of men and women. And this group of men and women, other than them, no one really cared about Jesus. But gradually, over these past 2,000 years, the followers of Jesus have grown in number until now over half of the world's population claims Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour in their lives. How do we explain this incredible growth of the Christian faith? Well, the answer is, the tomb is empty. The answer is, the tomb is empty. Jesus is alive. When Jesus died, so did our sin. When Jesus rose, so did we into new life. When Jesus died, we died to our old nature. When Jesus rose, so do we rise in our hope for the future. And all this is symbolized by Christian baptism. That in that water of baptism, as we are plunged down underneath the water, we are saying that we identify with the death of Jesus, that we are dying to ourselves. And when we rise out of that water, we're saying that so as Jesus rose from the dead, so we are rising into new life. So we are rising into a hope for the future. Because Jesus rose from the dead, so will we. Because Jesus rose from the dead, so will all of us who are followers of Jesus. You see, as Christians, we don't stay in our tombs. Christians don't stay in their tombs when they die. One day, we will be called out of the tomb. Just as Jesus said, Lazarus, come out. So one day we will be called out of the tomb. One day we will be raised to be like Jesus. And the earthquake symbolizes this. The earthquake is a symbol of the effect that the resurrection of Jesus had on the world. Normally an earthquake leaves destruction. But notice this earthquake. This earthquake creates life. See, normally an earthquake, when it occurs, 
all we talk about is a destruction. But when this earthquake takes place, it brings life. It opens up to new life. It opens up the grave for people to be raised again. Matthew 28 says, Suddenly there was a great earthquake. And then we're told later that uh, people were raised that day and walked out of their graves. This earthquake symbolizes the effect the resurrection of Jesus has on the world. Jesus' resurrection brings life. It opens tombs. The dead now have life. And you see, Jesus' resurrection leads us to life, not loss. Jesus' resurrection leads us to peace, not panic. Jesus' resurrection leads us to eternal life, not an ending. At the present moment, we live with uncertainty in this world. But we're told that we have a sure hope. And as a a result of that sure hope, we will enter into a new eternal life. And that sure hope of that new life is what the resurrection of Jesus gives to us. A man lost his wife. She died early on in their marriage. And the pastor said to the man, Friend, I'm very sorry that you have lost your wife. And the man said, No, I didn't lose her. He went on to say, You cannot lose something when you know where it is. And I know where she is. She's in heaven. You see, friends, that's our sure hope. That one day we will be called out of the tomb because Jesus was called out of his tomb and it's empty. And so we have the opportunity to share together this more, this evening in communion. And you might have a rice cracker or some bread and you might have a cup of juice there or some water or whatever you find significant to represent the body and blood of our Lord Jesus. And if you haven't got that ready, well, you might like to just pause at this moment and prepare yourself to find some emblems that enable you to remember the sacrifice and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. Easter Sunday, the resurrection of our Lord. The graves are open, death's defeated, life refuses to be contained. Easter Sunday, the resurrection of Jesus is a reminder, nothing is impossible to God. Hope is never extinguished. Love is never conquered. And so we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus by participating together in communion. At the Last Supper on the night before Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. And when he broke it, he gave it to his disciples saying, This is my body, given for you. Take and eat it and remember me. So church family, let's take and eat and receive the resurrection life of Christ. Then Jesus took the cup and he blessed it. And then he said, this is my blood poured out for you. Whenever you drink it, remember me. So church family, let us take and drink and receive the forgiveness of our sins through the shedding of the blood of Jesus. Let's pray together. Our good Father in heaven, we thank you for the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that we celebrate today that Jesus is alive, that the tomb is empty, that the earth has quaked and has released him from the grave. 
oh Lord, at, at times it's hard for us to grasp all of this, but we believe it and we are in awe. We pray that that revelation of the resurrected Jesus would continue to empower us in our life of faith at this time that we find ourselves. We pray this all in the mighty name of King Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you for the privilege of being able to join with you on this Easter Sunday evening. Thank you for being willing to spend some time to cast our mind to the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. And just a reminder that as we uh, go into the week, uh, that there will be a Wednesday devotional on the book of Romans, and I trust that you might be able to join us then. But now, church family, may the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favour and grant you peace, now and forever. Well, go with God. He's risen. Happy Easter.